Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to the review of Anthems of Rebellion, the fifth studio record by the Swedish melodic death metal band Arch Enemy. Today we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of the record so I've decided to go back and see if it still holds up or not. My story with this band is quite simple, I've already reviewed their record Stigmata and Rise of the Tyrant and there I said that the first song I've heard by Arch Enemy is Behind the Smile because it was featured on the sampler Metal Mania 2002. That's where I first heard this band and I love that song Behind the Smile so I had to check out their entire discography and the rest is basically history. This is the second record with Angela on the vocals, we also have Amod Brothers on the guitars, Chris and Michael, Charlie on the bass and Daniel on the drums. Also we have a guest Perth playing the keyboards, he's not a member of the band but he's playing here. As usual, most of the songs on the album were written by the Amod brothers. Also this is the first album with clean vocals done by Chris Amod on two of the songs. The production is tight, it's clean but heavy, no loudness or no clipping. I love how the vocals, the drums, the guitars and the bass are mixed. It all sounds clear and powerful at the same time. Message is diverse. The songs are about various topics ranging from anti-religion, social issues, personal struggles. It depends on the song. Structure of the tracks is between basic and advanced, which means they almost follow that standard structure of intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, then you have a bridge, then again verse and precursor chorus, then an outro. Sometimes it's slightly different, like in the song Dead I See No Future there are 5 guitar solos, usually a song has only 2 of them. The music on this record can be described as melodic death metal, but I feel a small influence from the band Fear Factory when it comes to the drumming here. The record starts with an intro called Turn Down The Walls, there's no music here, just some guitars and a large crowd shouting. It's not a song, I don't know why this is on the record. As you know from my previous reviews, I am not a fan of intros like that. I like when an album starts with actual music. This is nothing to me, 5 out of 10, it's okay, I don't care for it. Silent Wars is the first actual song here, and the first thing you're going to notice here is the drumming. It's stellar for the entire record. Daniel is killing it. His double bass work is legendary. His groove, his style, his precision, the tempo changes, it all works. Also what's interesting is what I stated before. I feel a slight Fear Factory worship on this record when it comes to the double bass work. Songs like Despicable Heroes or Exist to Exit have those very Fear Factory moments when it comes to the drumming, you know, that do 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 It almost sounds like a breakdown from deathcore or shit like that. Next we have the bass by Shaylee, and he's killing it as well. I love that he has his own lines. There are parts on this record where you can only hear the bass, the vocals and the drums, no guitars, and that's quite interesting. It brings some variety into the songwriting, I truly enjoy that stuff. The bass is audible and it sounds fantastic. Next we have the guitar work. The guitar work is stellar throughout the entire record. I prefer Chris's solos and riffs over Michael's and that's why I am sad that he's no longer in this band. I love those melodev, guitar riffs, the solos, also more groovier oriented parts. We even have one song here that kinda sounds like corn, so do metal, wow! <laughs> I love every single guitar riff on this record, except a few of them, but most of it is beautiful. Finally we have the vocals by Angela, and she's on top of her game here. Her vocals sound so crisp and full of anger, I love her screaming. I don't know if she's using some effect on her voice, but it's like slightly underwater and it's like very primal sounding and I just love it. She did not sound like that on the next albums, but on this one and the previous one she has that grit and energy in her screaming that I absolutely love and that's why 
I think she was the best arch enemy vocalist ever. This song in particular has my favorite vocals from her. She sounds just so full of anger like this is killing us. <laughs> She's just doing that voice and it's so beautiful to my ears. I love every vocal line on this song. Also I forgot to mention that we also have some clean vocals on two of the songs. I don't enjoy the clean singing by Chris. I think it was a mistake. And we also have keyboard elements on this record. And I also think that most of them suck. But at least there are no keyboards or singing on Silent Wars. This song is a classic Arch Enemy track. I don't know if they are still playing it live, probably not, because it's brutal, it's heavy, it's melodic, it's straight to the point, the guitar solos are nice, the riffs are vicious and evil sounding, the vocals top notch, 11 out of 10. We Will Rise is one of the most recognizable songs from this band. It's much more mellow and mainstream I would say compared to some of the songs here. I do love the verses where only the bassist is playing, when there are vocals and drums obviously, but no guitars. I truly enjoy those moments and also the guitar riffs on this song are marvelous. They are easy to play but fun to listen to and that guitar solo at the end is just so beautiful. Same as the drumming. Like, the drummer is killing it throughout this entire song and his slow double bass part at the end is truly captivating. This song is beautiful from beginning to the end. Everything works here, from the vocals to the instruments. We will rise, rise above. 11 out of 10, Dead Eyes, See No Future. Now this song yet again is one of the classics from this band. I feel that it's not on the same level as the previous two songs, but it's still a masterpiece without any flaws, I enjoy every guitar riff here, every bass line, every drum line, the vocals are just wow, I love Angela's voice here, the guitar solos are so fun to hear, especially that last one, it's full of energy, it's intense and it will stay in your head, 10 out of 10, Instinct, now a fun fact for you, the previous three songs were written by both of the brothers, mostly Chris, I love Chris, and this one is only just by Michael, and you can actually feel that he was inspired by more modern bands, because every song he does on this record by himself isn't as good as when Chris is doing it. And this one actually has that one guitar riff that sounds like corn, like it's from Untouchables record, you can feel that. And I don't mind it because I love corn, I love metal, but some people don't enjoy this song because of that. I love the vocals here, they are again angry and full of emotions. The guitar riffs, crunchy, straight to the point. This is not your standard melodic death metal song, but it does have some tremolo riffs and some death metal parts. It's a weird track for sure, but I do love every second of it. But it's not on the same level as the previous three ones. Yet, it's still a masterpiece. 10 out of 10. Leader of the Rats is my all-time favorite song from Arch Enemy, right after Damnation's Way. This is a classic. The vocal performance, the lyrics, are just exquisite. Anja's voice is so vicious and angry sounding. She's so dark here. I wish she would sing like that on every song, you know? That screaming is just out of this world. Then we have the guitar work. It's fantastic, we have some evil sounding riffs, but also some melodic ones. That riff in the chorus, it's so positive sounding, yet evil at the same time. It's hilarious to me, it's so memorable and it never leaves my head. I love that part, and actually every other part is great as well. Even the one in the middle where there's just the bassist playing, that's also memorable. This song is a goddamn masterpiece. 12 out of 10, Exist to Exit. Now this is the first disappointing song on this record, like it doesn't live up to the standards of the previous one. I still enjoy it, it has a dark atmosphere. If this was on the newer Art Enemy records with Alicia, I would say it's the best song ever, but it's here, so it's not the best. It's, it's just great, you know, I enjoy it from beginning to the end, I never skip it. 9 out of 10, Marching on a Dead End Road. 
Now this one was written just by Chris and it's an intro, it's very beautiful and somber, it sounds very nostalgic, I wish it was longer, that's my only critique. 9 out of 10, Despicable Heroes. Now this song was written by the drummer and then by Michael and I just love it with all of my heart. It's kinda repetitive when it comes to the verses, but the chorus slaps and that bridge part is just so fucking good. Wow, we have a natural harmonics here. It's evil sounding, it's full of energy, beautiful track. Also the lyrics are great, they're basically against religion and charges, shit like that. 10 out of 10, end of the line. This is the first song with clean singing and that's the only part I don't enjoy about this song. Everything else is on point. 9 out of 10. We have 3 songs left, all were written by Michael Amott. The first one is called The Humanization and here we also have some clean singing by Chris. But this time it doesn't annoy me that much because the whole song is just so fucking good. Especially the guitar riffs and the chorus. The chorus has a very evil sounding atmosphere, in fact that the vocals are just so fucking good. This is a classic song, if it didn't have the clean vocals, it would have been legendary. 10 out of 10, Anthem, now this is an intro by Michael and, well Michael is not Chris, this is too melodic for my taste. This sounds like an anime opening to me, it's a good track, but it's not my type of melodies, you know. 7 out of 10. And the final track, Saints and Sinners. I truly enjoy the evil sounding verses here, but the chorus is a little bit too melodic for me. The bridge as well. It's a great song, don't get me wrong, but compared to everything else, it falls short. 8 out of 10. To sum it all up, the consistency is stable and the flow is fitting, replayability. Yeah, it's an excellent record. It's beautiful from beginning to the end. Sure, some of the songs aren't of the same quality as most of the record. The highlights here are We Will Rise, Silent Wars, Leader of the Rats, That I See No Future, Instinct, Despicable Heroes, Dehumanization. These songs are masterpieces and they should be cherished. But we have some disappointing shit here as well, like we don't need the intro, Tear Down the Walls, Anthem, yeah, okay. And Saints and Sinners, it's great, but it's not leader of the rats, you know. I still think this is the second best Arch Enemy record. Wages of Sin will always be my favorite. But this one, well, it's not bad. It has some very classic songs that I always like to listen to. Like, I actually was smiling while listening to songs like Leader of the Rats and Who Will Rise because they reminded me of better times. Celebrate Mercy by spinning this album today. It deserves your love and attention. That's all from me. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Use the description. I will see you in my other videos. Bye.